How are we doing today? Today is a little different. I, uh, I've been taking a lot of photographs in the desert, and a lot of my stuff is with cactuses and sunsets and things like that. But I wanted to do something a little different. So I drove up to Payson, and I am at a place called Christopher Creek. The reason I picked this spot is, one, that it's in the middle of the woods. I mean, we're in the middle of pine trees here, which is cool. And I wanted to get some shots of of the creek and the water and flowing water. Little cascades and I don't know if there's going to be any waterfalls in this creek because it's I think it's it's lower than it is in the spring when the snow melts. So we're going to do a little exploring and find out what we can do. And what we're after today is to try to get those smoke, silky smooth water shots. You've probably seen them in on Instagram or Facebook or Arizona Highways magazine. If you've ever flipped through an Arizona Highways magazine and you see a picture of a river or a creek or something like that, it's that real silver looking smooth water. And we're going to find out how to do that today just by changing our shutter speed. The way you get that photograph is with long shutter speed. The shutter is open for a long time and the final result is really smooth looking water. And it's a really cool effect. So we're going to see if we can find some compositions in here and see if we can get those shots. So let's go for a walk. Okay, it's probably really noisy here, but um, I found my first shot of the day. There's a little cascade right there. It just, <clears throat> there's not much water in this river right now, in this creek right now. I mean, it's flowing and it's noisy, but the cascades over the rocks are, are, are smaller. So what I decided to do is to take my 70 to 300 lens and zoom in on that cascade right there I've got my settings at f11 and a one second shutter speed I had to put an ND filter on the on the front of the on the front of the lens in order to bring the shutter speed down slow enough to smooth out that water one one tip I'll give you is when you're using a slow shutter speed like this is either use a remote trigger that plugs into your camera or go into your menu on your camera and there is a, a two second timer or a 10 second timer. So when you touch the shutter button, you get your finger off of it, the camera shake settles down and then it takes the exposure. You wanna minimize the camera shake with such a long shutter speed. So I'm gonna take this shot. The other thing that's cool that's happening here is the light is coming in here. There's little little breaks in the clouds in the trees and the light is coming in here and it's hitting that little cascade right there so I'm gonna take that shot ah the light just faded on me oh here it comes again here we go ha. the other cool thing about this is the copper colors in the rocks I framed this shot up without any green in it. It's just the copper color of the rocks and the, and the smoothness of the water. Just a simple shot, but I kind of like it. Let's go find another one.
want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a little bit about filters. On a sunny day like today, when the light is when the light is is beaming into those little pockets of water, it's a really bright exposure, and it's hard to get your shutter speed slow enough to smooth out the water. So what we have to do is put it what's called an ND filter on the front of your lens. And basically what an ND filter is, it's a neutral density filter. And they they come in different different stops. There's four stop filters, two stop filters, six stop filters, eight stop filters, and it's the amount of light that it cuts. This is a what is this? This is a four stop ND filter. And basically what it is is sunglasses for your camera. What the heck was that? <laughs> I'm getting creeped out here. Anyways, what it is is a little filter that goes on the front of your lens that cuts the, the light and makes you slow down your shutter speed. Like I said, they come in different sizes. What's important is to get the right size filter for your lens. How do you know what size filter to buy? Well, if you look, let's grab a lens here. If you look on the, if you take your lens and you take off the lens cap, underneath every lens cap, there will be, it'll say the millimeters of the lens, the diameter, the diameter of the lens, so you know what size filter to buy. This one is a 58 millimeter lens. So you have to buy a 58 millimeter filter to go to screw on the front of it. And there's little threads in the front, so it just screws on there. Now there are some other filters <coughs> that a holder goes on there and they're square. A holder goes on the front of your on the front of your lens and you slide you slide a piece of glass. You slide a piece of glass in the in the holder. Both work fine. For me, when I'm out here, I want as little as possible to carry around and to fiddle with, so I use the screw-on filter. And they all work great. Sometimes, sometimes you don't need the filter. Last night I was in here, I, I just to take a look around, I, I got into town and, well, I just didn't want to go sit in a hotel room and watch television all night, so... I had a few hours, so I came out here and I took a couple shots. And it was cloudy enough and overcast enough last night that I didn't need a filter. I could get my shutter speed down to a half a second. And it was fine. It worked great. It was awesome. I didn't need it. So the conditions will tell you if you need it or not. If you can't get your shutter speed slow enough to get that water smoothed out, throw an ND filter on it and block out some of that light. And it'll force, you to, it'll force the shutter speed down. All right, let's go take some more pictures. I'm keeping my eyes open. I was walking up the trail. I was on this trail last night, and I could see my tracks where, where I walked. And there's elk tracks over the top of my tracks that I put in here last night. Really cool to see an elk in here this morning. I got to get these shots done. It's really sunny and beautiful right now. There's blue skies and light, puffy clouds floating around. But there's supposed to be rain coming in about noon. It's about 9.30, so... We got a few hours before it's gonna get ugly. Let's go take some more pictures. You know, there's something special about coming out here. I grew up in the Midwest and spent a lot of time in the woods. Hunting, hiking, just hanging around in the woods and I and I love it. I live in the desert now, so it's it's really, I'm really fortunate to be able to to come and spend some time here. 
I love the pacing area. There's so much to see, so much to do. And I have been out here all morning and I have seen no one. I've had, well, I saw one couple actually when I first came in and they didn't want to cross the creek. So they decided to go back to the car. I think she didn't want to get her shoes wet. But I just love coming out here. I love the smell of pine trees. I wish I could just I wish I could just bottle that up and give that to you. The solitude that you feel. All the one I always say this, but when I'm out taking pictures or doing little trips like this, all of the other stuff that's going on in my life is gone. All the problems, all the all the financial worries, all the you know, work, um, all the crap that we deal with on a daily basis. It's it's just gone when I come out here. It's just it's just gone, and I, you got to do that pretty often. Otherwise, you will go insane if you don't get away from your everyday life and your everyday humdrum. I shouldn't say humdrum. Your everyday routine: get up, go to work, go to the grocery store, take the kids to school. Whatever you're doing on a daily basis is just the routine gets for me it just gets old so I like to break it up with trips like this all right we're gonna keep going I'm getting farther I'm following this trail and I'm getting farther and farther away from the creek so I want to go get some more pictures of water before they said it's supposed to rain but it looks pretty nice I don't know we'll see what happens I'm gonna kill myself on all these rocks right here oh my gosh all right Let's keep going. Whoa! One other thing I gotta say. Do you ever notice when you get older? I mean, I don't know what's going on, but I trip on crap all the time now. I'm walking down this trail, and there's a 50 feet of nothing in the trail. Just solid dirt and one stone. And I tripped on it. My balance is freaky. I, I don't know what's going on. But, alright, I'm going to keep going. We're going to get some more pictures. Who knows what we'll find. Okay, we're going to take a couple more shots here before we got to go to lunch. I found this little... In this creek, there's a big rock pile in the middle of it. And the creek goes around... The creek goes around the rocks like that, and there's a little stream over there and a little stream right here. So I've got two shots that I'm going to take here. The first one I got set up is a vertical shot. First one I got set up is a vertical shot of this this side right here. It works great for Instagram. Just turn your camera vertical and take a shot like that. So we're going to do this. I put a, uh, I've got a little wider lens on this thing. This is a, uh, a 24 to, I'm sorry, 17 to 50. And I've got this as wide as it goes, 17 millimeters. I put an ND filter on the front of it. My exposure time, let's check this here. Right now I've got three second timer, uh, three second exposure. But the light is changing so fast. The light comes in, the clouds part, light comes in, gets brighter. I've got to change my, I've got to change my exposure time. Like right now, it just got really bright in here. And now if I shoot this at three seconds, it's going to be overexposed. So I'm constantly, I'm constantly monkeying with the exposure time, with the shutter speed. All right, the way the light is, one second. 
That's pretty cool. Let's take another one. About a second and a half, a little longer. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna take a horizontal shot in here. Let's set that, let's set that up. Okay. With the horizontal shot, I've taken the, I've framed up that, that pile of rocks. It kind of looks like a V like that. Kind of put that in the center of the frame. I've got this streamer on this side coming into the frame and cutting along the bottom of the frame. Little bit of green on the top. Just on the top of the frame, there's just a little touch of green to show you that we're in the woods. It's going to give us a little depth in the shot. Let's try one. That's a five second exposure. It just got dark in here. Five seconds. Holy cow. The longer, the longer the shutter speed is, the, the smoother the water's going to look. Take one more. I really like that. All right, I'm going to frame that up a little different. It's a good idea to take multiple shots when you're in your different focal lengths. Because the light doesn't always stay. The light is changing all the time. So when you get back to your computer, you can pick the ones you want. I always do that. I take one far. I take different focal lengths, wide, vertical, horizontal, cover the entire area. I just love the way that water looks. Okay, I think we're done here. I'm going to uh, head back to the truck and head to town. It's really starting to cloud up a little bit now. I don't want to get wet out here, so I'm going to head to town and get some lunch. Thanks for coming along today. Christopher Creek, it's about uh, 20 minutes east of Payson off of 260. Check it out. It's a really cool place. See you guys.